Hello everyone, I'm recording this video to show you how to schedule a simulation from inside Rhino plugin using the pollination panel. This is a new workflow that we have developed. It's available in version 127.14 and, and newer. In case you want to check the version, you just click here and click on about and you'll see it here. If you don't have the latest version, if your version is older, you have to update to the newer version, uh, download the latest version from Pollination, and then you can try it. I have two rooms here and two classrooms, and there is a hallway in the, in the middle. So what I want to do, I want to set up this model to run an annual daylight simulation. Uh, the first thing is this model doesn't have sensor grid, so what I'm going to do is PO add sensor grid. Uh, I'll select all the rooms. And then I'm going to add grid size 0.5, offset is 0.8, and merge coplanar is on, which is okay for this case, doesn't really matter. So these are all the sensors that I wanted. So I made sure first the model has sensor grids. Now, uh, in the older version, you would have clicked on this run simulation button to model it. Probably, or maybe at some point you watch this, we have removed this. We kept it for now. Uh, as we are rolling out this new feature, but in the future you probably won't see this. So what you need to do instead is to run a command called PO panel. And this command will bring this panel. I already have the panel, so it's it didn't pop up, but you will see the panel here. This panel is basically the same user interface that you'll see online when you check pollination. Um, so the rest is similar to how you schedule a simulation on pollination. I can Click here, go to my projects. If I want to run it in, in existing projects, I can select the project and run it there. For this video, I'm going to walk it step by step, assuming you have not done any uh, work with pollination. This is your first one, so you need to create a project first. You could have done it from here, plus to do new project or new study. The reason uh, I came here just to show you that you can use an existing project. So let's create a new project and I'm going to create this under Ladybug Tools account, not my personal account, uh, the, one of the organizations that I'm a part of, and I'm going to call it Classroom Studies. Um, and for description, I have a placeholder. This is a pre project to run daylight study for the classroom. I'm going to make it public so you guys can see it and check it out, but I could have make it private. So only Ladybug Tools team can, can see the project. Once I create the project, the first step is I need to go and set the settings and add the recipes that are um, basically um, uh, allowed to, to run in this project. So by default, there is no recipe. This is helpful to make sure your projects, especially if you have projects in organizations, you want to make sure you know what people run under the project. You don't want them to run anything and everything. If you don't have budget for something, for example, you don't want uh, people to run, I don't know, like large comfort studies, right? So you can search here. I can start typing annual. And these are all the different uh, recipes with annual. I want annual daylight. I select it here. Uh, then I can leave the tag to any, which basically means it will always uh, bring the latest version of the annual daylight recipe, or I can select, I'm going to be selective here, and I select the latest version 0913-viz. The reason I select the dash viz because it generates a visualization that I'm going to use to visualize the result back into Rhino. So I'm going to add this. Now I have a recipe under this project. I can set up the access. Again, this is a public project. Everyone has access to it, so it doesn't matter. And there are other options to modify the name or um, the description for the project. For now, we're not going to do that. So I go back to project. I click here on classrooms. And I'm going to set up a new study by clicking on this plus and selecting a recipe. In this project, we only have one recipe. So I select the recipe. Here I need to add a study name, right? So uh, demo, or let's say pollination demo video. And then a description. This is useful for you to be able to go and find uh, the description. Uh, you know, later on in C, like based on description to understand what the study is what. This project will not have that many studies, so a study description is not that important, but I still take the time to write something. This is the demo 
annual daily run from inside Rhino panel. Okay, now that I have these two, uh, I check here and you can see there are two required inputs for this recipe. One is the model, the other one is the weather file, WEA weather file, right? And then there are optional inputs here for CPU count. You can always click on this I to see what every input is. So one thing that I know is for this model, AB2 is not going to cut it, it's deeper. So I'm going to add, so let's go AB4 here. And then for AD, I, I can do it 10,000 uh, instead of five. And I'm going to bring down the limit to a smaller value to be a high qual higher quality simulation. I can go here for model, I have three options. One is I can get it from cloud. So if I have this project is on the cloud, if any model is uploaded there, I can get it from cloud. In this case, I don't have any model. I just created the project. The other option is I can load it from local. So I can click on this local here and then click and then load it from a folder here. In for example, from demo, I could have load this classroom, right? But when because I'm inside Rhino, the default is set to CAD, which means I can click here on get model. And if we load this model directly into panel, if I click on this eye here, you will see there is a preview that makes sure like the model is loaded correctly. So I have this here. Great. Then I can do the same for WEA. I can load it from cloud, but I don't have anything on cloud right now. So I'm going to load it locally. I click on local. And then from demo project, I'm going to select the WEA for Golden Colorado. So I open it. Uh, now I have two options for running the simulation. I can run it on the cloud or I can run it locally. And it's easy as changing, switching basically between cloud and local. So when I go cloud, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oops, I made a mistake. Uh, down here, I can go between local and cloud. So when I go to local, I can set the number of um, CPUs for run, right? locally and then I can also select what folder I want the study to execute in so uh, here I go to see um, pollination simulation there should be a folder for simulation and I select okay so this change it here you can also change all this the default value here by clicking on this button here and set it up directly here uh, as the default one. And then now that I have this, again, this is local right now. So I'm going to create a study and it will start this local study here. So you'll see in a second, it basically changes and now it's running the study locally. So it's a start the simulation. I will schedule another one quickly to run on the cloud too. Um, and the reason for that is basically to do a comparison and also have one a study on the cloud so you guys can use for uh, as a reference so you can now you can see local studies is running but now I'm, I want here to go to studies not local ones create a new one um, select the same recipe uh, from Rhino on pollination so this is the same daylight annual simulation on pollination cloud. So this one will run on pollination. Again, get model. So I get the model, uh, select the file locally because it hasn't been uploaded to pollination. So now done. This time I'm not going to go local. So I'm going to create a study. And now this one creates the study on pollination cloud. So I hope it makes sense that what, what happened is I basically use the exact same UI to run the study locally and schedule it on a cloud. One small difference here because this is on pollination uh, and you can have multiple runs. Instead of going to the run page, it basically created a, a study and then the single run is here. If I click here, I can see all the inputs and outputs and then I can click on the I that takes me to um, to the uh, to the run page so now you can see all the inputs are here oh and i forgot so for the cloud i left it to two 
instead of changing it for so the these are the default radiance parameters I was trying to be fast so the one that I'm running locally actually will be more accurate so in any case uh, now the one that I ran locally is done so I can go back here to classroom studies um, this is the one that's running on the cloud I can click here and go to local studies and you see I have executed one local run from Rhino if I run any local runs uh, from Grasshopper or Revit using the same panel using pollination plugins they will all show up here and I'm going to record another video that shows you like how I'm, how I'm going to use Grasshopper to design the shading and then load the results back into into this Rhino model and upload the Rhino model but for now let's go here and see uh, how the UI looks like so again remember this was a local run it ran here I can see the folder that the run was executed when I click on that folder here I can see if there are any errors by clicking here on the log and I can also delete this if, if I want um, but what gets more exciting is I have now access to all the outputs and I can click on this preview button and the result will directly go inside Rhino so now you can see uh, that interestingly enough we have some oh okay yeah because this is UDI useful daylight luminance so you can see there are at the bottom of in the end of this room we don't have enough daylight as expected but then here we we get enough daylight because you have this uh, this one here skylights and then I mean or side lights and then you have the window here but you can see you have a little bit of glare here happening because too much daylight uh, facing south um, so that's something that we can we can try the shading and thing it see if shading can help that's a different video but for now what I like you to see here is okay I have the result here and I can preview it but what if I want to do more what if I want to change the color set what if I want to see the other metrics of annual daylight so what I can do I can click here on preview to turn it off and then select add and click on add and now this will be baked into your Rhino plugin so what does that mean? That means if I go outside, click on uh, Classroom Study, so now you see I'm outside that, the visualization is still here. And this is an object that's baked into Rhino. So I can go ahead and, you know, like change the color set if I want. I mean, uh, this is not a great color set for useful daylight illuminance. Um, I can do the original ladybug that people are very used to. And now you can see that the color set changed. This is saved in the Rhino document. If I go under layers, you can see all the different metrics that were available for this, available for this annual daylight are here. So we can, for example, turn off the useful daylight illuminance and turn on um, this one, what's this, uh, daylight autonomy. So with daylight autonomy, because more daylight is not a problem, you see there are no issues here. And in daylight autonomy, because you, you go with 300 instead of 100 as the threshold, you see like it shows the end of the room is darker. So different metrics, different ways of reading. Again, this video is not about what are these metrics, but mostly about the overall workflow. Um, by now, the, the, the other one, the, the one that I ran on cloud should be also done, right? So this is also completed. So the difference here is uh, the one that I ran on cloud. One is everyone now can see it on the cloud, right? Like if, if I go and open my browser and go to Pollination Cloud, uh, give me one second. Under Ladybug Tools, projects there should be a new project called classroom studies and this one is now submitted to cloud so other people can see it I can share it with others you know like anyone who wants to see it of course people can check the result on on the web right so the results are available on the web in our web viewer you can change all this there are controls here on changing you know like the color set all those uh, stuff that you, you can do also but it's it's much better when you do it inside Rhino, right? And it's easier and you don't need to go here to do that. So what I can do similarly, I can also come here and now I can add the result. If I click on add, it will bake the result from cloud to, to Rhino.
There are other stuff here, so, so seeing all the files, uh, seeing the debug of, of, this, of this study, and you can also cancel it while it's running. But what I want to show you, which is new, is one of the new things that we added is now you can download this result visualization also as an HTML. So why is it good? Because of course these results are now baked into Rhino, right? So if, if you have the Rhino plugin, you can share it with someone and they will see it. It's also on the web. So if if you send someone to this page and they click on visualization, right? Even here, they have the web-based visualization. But there are cases that you want to send to someone who don't know how to use pollination, they're not Rhino users, you just want to send them uh, an interactive file that they can use. You can use this download HTML. And now if I open this file, you should see wherever it opens, yes. So now this is a self sufficient HTML file that has all the information. So you can send this HTML file to someone and say, hey, check out the results if you have any comments. It's usually if you have more experienced people, I mean, they have to get used to, to this uh, UI, but it's it's a very simple UI, so they can quickly check the model, you know, check the result. If something doesn't make sense, they can let you know, or you can share it with the customer, it's interactive. Uh, of course, you can use Pollination as the place to do that. That's what we hope people do, like use it as a hub for collaboration. But we also understand there are cases that people uh, don't, don't want to go through all the Pollination stuff. Okay, so I showed you how to schedule the simulation, how to run it locally, how to run it on cloud, and how to visualize the result and how to bake the results back uh, in, into Rhino without leaving Rhino for doing all this stuff. So the next one that I'm going to do, the next uh, video that I'm going to record is actually going to show how we are going to deal with the issue that we had with useful daylight illuminance with this glare issue here. And if we can add some, run some parametric studies in Grasshopper, a simple one, and reduce the amount of glare here close to the window. Okay, well, thank you for watching and let us know if you have any questions. The best place to reach out to us is Discourse, uh, Pollination Discourse, at discourse.pollination.club. Uh, thank you so much.